Welcome to writing half reactions for redox. We know that in redox reactions there's a transfer of electrons. Some element has to gain electrons and some element has to lose those electrons. We have a way of emphasizing the oxidation and reduction processes individually and that's done by writing what we call half reactions. And half reactions are going to be useful for when we talk about balancing redox reactions as well as when we talk about batteries or electrochemical cells. So let's see what half reactions are. Here we have a redox reaction. I have copper plus silver nitrate gives me copper 2 nitrate and silver. This is a single replacement reaction with the copper replacing the silver in the nitrate. Now I can identify this as redox because I know that all single replacement reactions are redox reactions. But since I want to write half reactions, I need to go through and assign oxidation numbers to everything to figure out what's actually being oxidized and what's being reduced. So my first step here will be to fill in the oxidation numbers for every element that shows up here. So copper to start off is a pure element, has an oxidation number of zero, oxidation state of zero. Now for the next compound, there's a trick we can use for the nitrate. Because the nitrogens and oxygen show up on this one side together in the nitrate, and they also show up in a nitrate on the other side, meaning there are no other oxygens present on either side, they're all in the nitrate. So the entire nitrate I can consider as negative one. I don't have to go in and fill in the nitrogen and oxygen individually, but that's only because they show up the same on both sides, with no extra oxygens or nitrogens on either side. So if the nitrate is minus one, that means the silver has to be plus one. If the nitrate's minus one on this side, there are two of them, so this is copper two plus two. And then the last silver here is a pure element by itself, so it has an oxidation number of zero. So the elements that were oxidized and reduced were the copper and silver. That's the pair that's being oxidized and reduced. So the copper started as a zero and became plus two. The silver started as a plus one and became zero. Well, for the silver, the number is being reduced. One goes down to zero. So I know that this one is reduced. And that means the other one has to be oxidized. We could also look at this from the copper's perspective. The copper started off at zero, and its oxidation number increased. It became more positive. The only way to become more positive is to lose electrons, and losing electrons is oxidation. So we've now identified in this whole reaction what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. We can now break this whole reaction into half reactions, specifically half for oxidation and half for reduction. So for the oxidation half of the reaction, that's going to concern copper, because copper was oxidized. So we know copper started at an oxidation state of zero, and it became copper 2 plus. For reduction, we can write a similar half reaction, with Ag starting at plus one, the silver starts as a plus one, and it became Ag zero, pure silver. But there's something missing from these reactions. We have to somehow account for the fact that copper went from zero to plus two, and silver went from plus one to zero. And we already know that that change is caused by a transfer of electrons. We just need to represent those electrons somehow. So for copper to go to plus two, it had to lose two electrons. That means two electrons we write on the product side. And for silver, it went from plus one to zero. And we know that reduction means it's a gain in electrons. Well, that's a gain of one electron. And these are our half reactions for our original equation. We have one for oxidation, and we have one for reduction. Let's try another one. Here we have another redox reaction. We have ammonia combining with oxygen to give NO2 and water. Now this equation is not balanced, but we're not going to worry about that yet. Instead, we're going to focus on just writing half reactions. So just like before, we want to start by identifying all the oxidation states or oxidation numbers for each element involved here. Now oxygen right here is a pure element, so that's easy to identify as zero. Hydrogen we know is always plus one, except one with a metal, but nitrogen is not a metal. There's three hydrogens here, so it's a total of plus three that the nitrogen needs to balance out by being a negative three. We can now look at the other side of the equation. I have oxygen showing up in two places, and we know oxygen is always minus two in compounds, and even though there are some exceptions to that, these are not the exception cases. In water, hydrogen also follows this rule to be plus one. And that leaves this last nitrogen here. We have two negative two oxygens here. It's a total of negative four. This nitrogen has to be a positive four to balance that out. 
So let's identify what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. The nitrogen started as a minus 3 and ended up as a plus 4. The oxygen started at a 0 and ended up as minus 2. We can see the oxidation number going down, becoming more negative for oxygen, so that means it's reduced. And the nitrogen becomes more positive, so it was oxidized, it lost electrons. We can now set up our oxidation and reduction half reactions. For oxidation, N started at a minus 3 and became N plus 4. Nitrogen going from a minus 3 to a plus 4 means it lost 7 electrons. 7 electrons were involved. And we write lost electrons on the product side. For reduction, we know that oxygen started off as a 0 and ended up as a minus 2. That means there was a gain of electrons here, specifically gain of 2 electrons. And we write gained electrons on the reactant side. Now our reduction reaction is not actually done yet. We need to do something else to it. And that's because the oxygen that's in this zero state is actually diatomic oxygen, oxygen 2. And we need to account for that. Whenever you have a diatomic, you need to account for it in the half reaction. So we're going to adjust our half reaction to account for double the amount of starting oxygens. So O becomes O2, still has a zero oxidation state. It's going to become two separate oxygens. Each one has a minus two state. But as you can see, I'm doubling everything in the half reaction. That means I also double the number of electrons gained. That becomes four electrons gained. Because for two oxygens to end up as minus two, that takes four electrons. So now we have our two half reactions, one for reduction and the other for oxidation. And it's important to remember to adjust the half reaction whenever you have a diatomic involved. In the next video, we'll see how we can use these half reactions, the ones we actually made just now, to balance this original equation. That wraps up our lesson on writing half reactions for redox. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.